Liga. Readings and salutations, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back to League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you for what is now. I'm going to officially dub the beginning of our world's 2023 preview. We're doing the full power rankings, not 22 teams to one, 23, because we're giving both Golden Guardians and Team BDS a spot on this list because, hey, they made it to work. Uh, kind of making it. They to made it to Worlds. <laughs> worlds get started October 10th. October 9th, of course, is They're gonna going to be. They're going to Korea. That means they made it. Tickets are booked. Yes, sir. And you better believe it is time to start getting yourselves ready for Worlds. All these teams, all these players are. Get your snackies. Start getting your sleep schedules set up if you're in North America because you're going to be up pretty late into the night, early mornings for these games to go on. But it is Worlds time, baby. And no better way to start than looking at a power rankings of all these squads. Obviously, when you start at the bottom of a lot of these lists, it's teams you and I aren't super familiar with, with a lot of the playing squads, and that's the game where you're kind of talking biggest potential for upset. And you start with the least likely ones, squads like Rainbow Seven. Uh, we've seen them internationally. Obviously, this is the exact same uh, starting five that we saw at MSI. DFM, I think we're feeling a bit less confident because of the roster turmoil and Utapon now playing top lane. Playing it domestically is a different beast than going internationally. This is going to be a whole new world, seeing Utapon at an international event up in that top side. So used to the type of threat that he could represent. Now throwing it up there in that top side for DFM. Yeah, I think expectations are going to be shifted a little bit when you're looking at a team like movie star and some of these others really the, the thing for me is going to be looking at where is the improvement from msi can you get that one little extra notch that little bit of progress at this next event is something that i think you got to be looking at as your goal in that point to keep your expectations in the right frame and now we're entering the new era where the vcs second seed are now the ones that will be looking to make some noise against either the LCS or the LEC. Team Wales took a couple games off GAM, but obviously they are going to be massive underdogs against whoever uh, the LEC or LCS fourth seed is coming through. Then we get into this top 20 area, and you talk about Loud, the three-peating CB LOL champions. That matchup against GAM is far and away the best matchup in playing stage. You even got history coming from MSI where Loud took them down. Yes, sir. -y. And I think that this is where it starts when you, you know, talk about everybody else kind of looking at, okay, how can we improve? How we can get this little notch up in our, in our level and what we've done, what we accomplished on the international stage compared to MSI, a squad like loud. It's not just that anymore. You've proven that you can get something done. You can do some damage. You belong to hang in this type of zone. Now it's time to break that barrier, push onwards and get yourselves out of here. And even though, you know, Loud got that win, Gam, I think everyone thought there was a big, uh, honestly, disappointment from the level that they were at at MSI. So looking for a rebound for them a few spots ahead of them. The Flying Oysters were no strangers to seeing internationally as well. And, you know, neat, took some games off PSG in those finals. And the PCS and VCS were always comparing as who is that just below major region status, but absolutely still feel like the PCS are, are a notch above the VCS right now. They're in that tier, that slot just that you put right ahead of where that VCS is. And I think a lot of that comes from where you have teams like PSG Town, we'll get to, and, and, and the Flying Oysters, and the type of power that we have seen from them, the type of control that we've seen them been able to put out there on the Rift. Big name player like Maple returning to the region, returning with PSG. That's, of course, something to talk about. And immediately getting slotted into that all pro slot was he in his first split back. Then we get to the Guardians in BDS, who probably pretty similar power level. Actually great that they're matching up. I don't think you give a massive edge either way. It's just which bias do you have heavier, Europe or NA? It's Europe and NA. It's going to be about where you think the power in League of Legends resides right now. Are you saying that it's in your solo lanes? It's in that top side. Can we get Adam steamrolling and pushing through all the way to crush NA's hopes? Or is it the side of the Golden Guardians where you got Gory popping off, Rivers helping him out in the jungle, and oh boy, don't look now, Crownie's Comet, it's missing. Stick say he's doing the damage. 
that's what it's all about golden guardians versus bds i feel like crowny versus stick say is the biggest advantage over to bds but then when you're looking at just bot lane you gotta like who he over that LeBron matchup. So you can go back and forth throughout the entire roster for both of these squads. Just feel absolutely tragic for one of these squads going all the way to Korea, playing one best of five, and then saying, great, great run, guys. We'll see you next year. I mean, I can see it now, as you mentioned that one, with Huhi in that bottom lane. We've seen Crowney get taken to task by a couple of these supports that are not scared to go all in, get that engage, and take down that prized carry. Got to be watching for that one. Then we get to these three seeds from the LCS and LEC. And again, I think Mad Lions and Team Liquid, you can kind of, you can compare. It's so difficult, again, to do these rankings internationally ahead of them. But we slotted PSG ahead of both of them. It was another incredibly dominant regular season, smooth playoff run. And it's not like either of us are oozing confidence in both Team Liquid and Mad Lions. So I don't think it's crazy putting PSG ahead of them. There's room when you're talking about both the Mad Lions and Team Liquid to find that, you know, kind of little bit of it that makes you feel a little uneasy, not want to go all in on them, that slots in a team like PSG. As I talked about, Maple coming back and having, as you mentioned, all pro level of form, stepping right back into the region and dominating is a big part of that for PSG. And again, you look at Mad Lions, you look at Team Liquid, there's areas that you're unsure of. Of course, with Team Liquid, they managed to do fantastic early. Can they hold on to it? Can they keep all the pieces together? Can Summit still you know, operate on whatever he's trying to do to push that advantage for the team and not be going too far over and extending it? And then on the Mad Lions side, of course, a little bit harder to get going, but if they get going, they get things rolling. That squad has got that synergy to keep things moving at a good pace. Chasey, the question mark for Mad Lions matching up internationally, and then the Young Guns on Team Liquid. We got tons of veterans and Summit, Piosa, and Core JJ, but Yawn and APA making their international debuts. Obviously going to be lots of eyes on how these rookies uh, show up on the big stage. Then the last two, LCS and LEC squads, Fnatic and Cloud9. I think you put them ahead of the rest of this board. I have much more confidence in both of these squads, at least making some noise against some of the better teams in the tournament than all the squads below them. And you should. I'm still somewhat hesitant with both of these squads to give them that full slap of approval that, yep, you can count on some wins, count on some damage at this world championship just because of a couple of uh, historical things. With Cloud9, I think... The little bit of cooling that they had in the summer split where they weren't necessarily as dominant. I think people wanted them to be as that front runner at the top of the LCS. And then as well, you're looking at this Fnatic team that has kind of only gotten it together, really came together in this summer split and started to hit their stride. The question for me with Fnatic is, of course, going to be about the health. What squad are we getting? What roster is rolling on through for them? Specifically, of course, Oscarin in the top side. Is he going to be back for this Fnatic team? Yeah, that's obviously the biggest question mark. We don't really have a timetable on that. Assume at the very least Wonder is probably coming in as a substitute. And you can't just be hiding on Orn and Renekton all, all tournament long. at something like Worlds when you're going up against the big boys in the top lane. Then we move into the top 10 and it really feels like if Cloud9 had won the summer split, I think people would be more confident in them as the first seed, even though NRG put forward a super solid entire playoff run. And honestly, I'm excited for some fresh faces to be that first seed for the LCS. Yes, sir. And I pray, I am praying copium, hopium, prayage, whatever, slam them all together. That this NRG team is able to keep that momentum, keep that form that they showed us throughout that playoff run, channel it, tap into that energy and bring it out on the world stage because that's the energy that the LCS fans deserve to see out there on the stage. You got big dokes popping off, contracts returning to world stage. Love to see things like that. Even the forgotten bot lane of Mr. FBI and Ignar going back to Worlds as well. Love to see this from NRG, and I really hope that we get the NRG that did crush Cloud9 in those finals, not the NRG that we have seen being consistent throughout the other parts of the LCS sports. And you want a better screenshot of the difference, the gap between the East and West. We got our champions of the LCS at number 10, and then you got the fourth seeds from the LPL and LCK, still ahead of them on this list. D plus, 
maybe more convincing in their wins to qualify for Worlds, but Weibo, I think, had harder competition to get through. Both of these squads share an incredibly up and down season, so let's hope for most of Worlds that they're both sitting up. <laughs> Yes, very much so looking to see, and, and and I think a lot of people, the entertainment value is of course going to be there if these two squads are popping off, if they are being these teams that, yes, representing as these lower level seeds from your region, but they can have that firepower, as we all know from the LPL and the LCK. A squad like D plus Kia, certainly one that I think has had of obviously those ups and downs throughout the year, but has the pieces where if everything's coming together, someone gets hot, you can support that player. This is absolutely a squad that can keep climbing, keep pushing through, make it the distance at this event. And then on the side of Weibo Gaming, the big thing for me that I have seen from this Weibo that you didn't see from Weibos before, and you didn't see from the Shy and the rest of the squad, they clutched it out. They had what it took. They had the focus. They had the mental strength to get through that gauntlet, through those tough series and tough opponents in the LPL. Forged in fire, here they are at work. And yeah, I mean, you talk about momentum, back-to-back -back elimination series, your entire season on the line is kind of the bonus or buff you get as that fourth seed coming through the LPL specifically. Weibo, the shy, Zhao Hu, full of veterans, riding high, heading into this world championship. Speaking to how stacked the top is, G2, as dominant a last three months in the LEC as you can possibly have, but the current power level in EU you can't put them higher than seven heading into this, but it feels like years of old because this is the only Western team that I'm actually confident in showing up and winning some games against the LCK and LPL. Call it facts, call it bias, whatever it is, this has got to be as far as a Western team can make it into this type of power rankings. G2 Esports, what is there to say about how incredible, how dominant, how fantastic this team has been able to show us. And I think the best thing about this, of course, is, you know, no one is is unfamiliar with hearing about G2 at international events, especially about some of the players that we will talk about. But really, the strides, the improvement that they have all made individually and as a group here is the biggest thing for me with this G2 and why you can have that confidence, why you can feel that type of power that they can put out and can match up against some of these teams from the LPL, from the LCK, Yes, they might have some opportunities to get absolutely blown out of the water. That's just going to be the case when you're dealing with the power that is the LCK and LPL at this point. But G2 Esports, believe in your rookie jungler, Yike. Believe in your veteran, Mr. Caps, in the mid lane, and the rest will come into form. And honestly, the growth from when they won spring to where they are now, almost that squad that didn't, you know, was still the best Western team at MSI, but smashed by the Eastern squads. They have leveled up two, three, four times from that power level, which you have to do against the LPL and LCK squads of the world. But I'm expecting a much better performance internationally at Worlds than we saw from them at MSI. Last one on this list is KT Rolster. This is a squad that at some points in the global power rankings, I think they peaked at number two way up there. And honestly, I feel like this playoff run in the LCK would have looked, could have looked. So incredibly different if KT doesn't pick T1 in that first matchup because I feel like they might have fared, even gotten a series win if they were matching up against Gen G later on instead of back-to-back -back T1 matchups. Just kind of crazy to think about the format we're going to have at Worlds now. Hey, no decisions in the KT roster hands. You just got to roll right just on dodge through. dodge T1 the entire bracket stage. So that's, that is the point. Maybe the RNG f falls through for KT where they get the proper bracket. They get the right run through that all things fall down for this team to capture it all. This is a KT team that I'm still very high up on, on what I think about what they can do, the type of power that these players have, the form that they have shown us throughout this summer split. Yes, you go into that, you know, game five, two times with the T1 squads. What are you going to do? in those big clutch moments. I think that is where I'm looking at this KT Rolster squad now because they've shown, hey, game one through four, we are good enough to pick up these victories. It is those crucial, those clutch, pressure-packed moments as a game five that I need to see this squad come through. And you know, you better believe it. At this point in the power rankings, you might, you're going to start getting some game fives out of Worlds.
and is long again. It, it feels like there's a mental block in there against T1. I feel like them of game five against another squad. Any team that doesn't have Faker on it, maybe you're talking about a different outcome, but they've just been bred in the fires that is the T1 organization. So they'll be ready for a solid performance at this year's Worlds. Top five action. Full teams we're familiar with during the global power rankings throughout all of summer and a contentious five spot for BLG. It's been so long since we were talking LPL playoffs, but they really didn't do themselves any favors by just bowing out in two straight losses after such an incredibly dominant regular season. I honestly wish we got to see some games out of them in Gauntlet to see if those were just two back-to-back -back bad series out of them. It's crazy to think that that's the end or what was the end of the summer split for BLG given how hot they were throughout almost the entirety of that summer split and what they were able to do. BLG sitting up here in this top five type area. It's crazy to think they actually might be the scariest shark lurking around at this point where you've got this other teams ahead of them feeling, yeah, this, uh, you know, we're, we're a notch above number five. We're fine. You got to be scared of that BLG shark. As you said, that type of power we have seen from them. Man like Bin in that top side is an instant game-changing level of talent. They might be the biggest question mark team heading into this event because we know that they have the capability to be better than every team in the world that's not named JDG. But if you're going solely based off of their most recent games, what have you done for me lately? Then they didn't look very scary against JDG or LNG. Right, and so that is going to be the big thing because for a squad like BLG, I think everybody is going to feel confident, going to feel safe when you're taking care of the lower down tiers, everything else, building yourself up, picking up a win here or there. It's going to be about the top of the table. Can you challenge? Can you take it? And that's going to be the question again. That has been the question for the last six months for this BLG team, and they've just come short every single time. Can they crack the code for Worlds? T1 can't crack the code of Gen G in another finals that they dropped. This one was 3 0 fashion. Game three was close, but Gen G was fully in control. It feels like there should maybe be a bigger gap between three and four when they have that direct head to head. But when you're comparing these teams against other squads around the globe, it's honestly a miracle that we're talking about T1 in a positive light, such a positive light, heading into Worlds despite losing the finals because. The rest of that playoff run was such a great turnaround. They did have a competitive five-game set against Genji in the winter finals, too. I don't know if we've ever had a team head to Worlds that has had the complete ends of the spectrum that we have seen from T1 this time because we have seen the losing streak of losing streaks from this squad. The question marks of question marks for established players, established stars of this lineup. Yet, when the unkillable Demon King returns to this lineup, all things are set right. Everything goes right. And this team is one of the top challengers in the world when he's in that lineup and everything's going right. There's a lot to talk about still with T1. That's going to take a little bit more time, further days to delve into this enigma that is them and what happened to them this year. But right now, they got a hold in that fourth spot because, as you said, ahead of them is going to be that Gen G. And you should be feeling very good about Gen G. After that 3 0, the players were elated with a three peat to their name. And now the entire landscape and narrative of the LCK has shifted for so many years. Chovy couldn't win, couldn't get it done in finals, couldn't get past the hurdle that was Faker. That's reversed now. They're plowing down everybody with different rosters too. Rookie AD carries coming in. Gen G still kind of a slept on first seed, but I'm feeling very good about them at this Worlds. I'm seeing a, a Chovy that is different than any Chovy we have seen at these international events before. He has got that confidence, that belief that comes by being a champion, being a consecutive champion here in the LCK. Really got that faith in him. The big thing that I'm looking at as well with Gen G is Mr. Pays replacing Ruler down in that bottom lane. He has been there every step of the way for this squad. Can he be there in these big time clutch moments? Because you better believe he was there every single time those clutch moments that Gen G needed him throughout the LCK. Let me see it at Worlds. 
So with the disappointment of BLG, the other side of things, you had the resurgence of LNG, a dominant series win against BLG, and nobody expected those grand finals to be not just five games, but that close. They absolutely tested and challenged JDG every single step of the way. Oh, LNG. This one feels good to get to talk about them at this type of point in the power rankings for Worlds. What they have shown, what they have improved this summer split and throughout those playoffs to harden themselves, to prove that they have got what it takes to be one of these elite, elite squads when all the dust settles. Mr. Scout in the mid lane there. And of course, can't be talking about Scout if you ain't talking about Tarzan in the jungle getting it done tarzan at worlds yes sir -y. and then you got maybe the most clutch player in the lpl you're talking about gala on this kaisa meta now one of if not the cleanest team fighting lpl 80 carries right alongside a guy like jackie love absolutely came online at the perfect time for lng and absolutely nobody should be sleeping on them despite being the lower seed than blg they are in better form right now heading into worlds Still not enough to take down the golden road leaders that are JDG. And for them, it's just the age old question ahead of Worlds. You got JDG or the field? Who you pick? Oh man, it is, of all the years, this is probably the hardest one. I gotta roll with the field. I gotta take that one. That just seems like the odds, the numbers are gonna be there. For me to come through but, but it's actually a decision because jdg has been so damn good. it really is that's how good of a favorite jdg is you spend any longer than two minutes watching one of our videos hanging out on the channel whatever you're gonna hear about how good this jdg team how dominant they have been all the way throughout the year every single challenge in the lpl every single rotating challenge in the lpl They've had the answer for, and they had all the answers at MSI as well. You gotta be looking at what is coming up next at this Worlds for JDG, and I think we're gonna be seeing a lot of highlight reels for Mr. Knight in the mid lane, for Mr. Ruler down in the bottom lane, and of course, can't be forgetting about Mr. 369 up in their top side. He's gonna be causing some damage. No question, they're gonna be the massive favorites coming into this event and look like the best opportunity for that golden slam. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. Thanks for watching as always, and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.